Welcome to episode 4 of the Biteblocks scripting tutorial for beginners. I don't know what I'm going to call it, something like that. If you found value from these tutorials, you know, make sure to check out the course in the comments. And in this episode, we're going to be going over more advanced, like, scripting things that you can do, right? So we're going to be going over tables, we're going to be going over dictionaries, and we're going to be going over stuff like, you know, like loops, like for loops, while loops. We're going to be going over if statements, you know, stuff like that, like just simple, basic things. So the first thing I actually want to cover are if statements and loops. So an if statement is basically how you can kind of set up two different paths, right? It's how you can check whether something is true or not. So what we could do is we could say if one, two, three, right, is equal to, and the reason I'm using two um, of the equal signs is that w w when, you, when you're using a, like just one equal sign, you're setting the value. But when you're using two, you're comparing. So if I'm using two, I'm asking if the if you know whatever is here is equal to whatever is here, right? So I'm not saying okay, one two three is equal to one two three. I'm asking if it is equal to one two three. So if one two three is equal to one two three, then and then I could do something here, right? Or I could do else, like so. So if one two three is equal to one two three, then you know I I I do whatever code I want here. But if it isn't equal to one two three, then I do something here or you could do an else if right so else if so if one two three uh isn't equal to one two three then um yeah then else if and then you, you say okay but like if one two three is equal to one two three four you know then we could do here and they could do else if this else if that so basically else else will run if all else fails else if just adds another question if the, so if, if the question above isn't true, then else if simply adds on another question. That's kind of the idea here, right? So obviously this will run because one, two, three is equal to one, two, three. Um, you, you could do something like if, if you want to check if one, two, three is not equal to one, two, three, then you do this squiggly line and then you do equals. So squiggly line and equals means not. So if one, two, three is not equal to one, two, three, then you do something. Or you could do, you could check if one, two, three is greater than one two three then you know do something if it's less than one two three then we do something if it's greater than or equal to then we do something if it's less than or equal to then we do something that, that's kind of the idea here right so for example yeah so yeah if one two three is equal to one two three then we can print hello like so then we could say else if um oh yeah else if one two three is not equal to 200, then we print by. I don't know. I mean, I'm just printing out. Uh, or hello world. There we go. So the way if statements work is that if one of them is true, then the others are, get ignored. Okay. So if one two three is equal to one two three, then we do this, and then all of these other ones is are ignored. That's why it says else, right? So else assumes that this isn't true. But if this is true, then it just ignores everything on the bottom. Which is why both of these are true. So one two three is equal to one two three, and one two three is not equal to two hundred, right? So both of these are true, but it's only going to print hello, and it's not going to print out world. Yeah, there we go. Because if one of them is true, then the rest gets ignored. So that's the idea behind if statements, okay? And loops are a little different. So the the most like easiest loop is just a while loop. So while um, something is true. So for example, while true, do, and then this is just going to keep on looping until this becomes false, right? So while one, two, three is equal to one, two, three, then we, we, we loop through something, right? It's also worth noting that if you just say, so if you just do a while true loop, it's going to break the game because it's going to basically try to infinitely do something. So let me share. Yeah. So my game is not enjoying the, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if Roblox Studio will crash because of this, but yeah, timeout, exhausted, allowed, execution time. Okay, yeah, so basically, this means that while true, it, it tried to do something forever, right? Which we, you it can't really do. Um, so, for example, let me show you. If I make a, like a variable for a number, num equals zero, right? And then I say while number is less than 10, then we do something. And then what I do, oh wait, no. Yeah, there we go. 
while number less than 10, do, and it will do something. So what I can do is I can say, okay, then we'll print out number, right? We'll print out num, and then we're gonna say num plus equals one, which plus equals basically says like, the number is now equal to the number's current value plus one, right? So in other words, you could say something like num equals to num plus one, right? Or plus equals one, it's the same thing. It just adds on one to the number. Um, and yeah, so what this does is it's gonna say, okay, while number is less than 10, which it is right now, it's less than 10, we're gonna print out the number and then we're gonna add one to the number. So eventually the number is gonna be above 10. And then once it's above 10, well then the while loop will stop, right? And then we could also say wait, we could say wait 0 0.1 seconds, right? So yeah, so every every 0 0.1 seconds is gonna add on, you know, one to the number. So if I, if I play the game right now, then let's see. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, there we go, yeah. yeah it, it, does, it doesn't reach 10 because then once it's 10, it's not below 10. So the, so the while loop doesn't print out 10, right? So yeah, so once it once the number becomes 10, then it just stops, okay? It's, it, it, just stop, it just stops looping. That's the idea behind a while loop, okay? Um, and then you have a for loop. There are two types of for loop. For, for loop basically will loop through something. For loops can loop through tables or they can loop through numbers. So right now our for loop, what, what it did was it looped 10 times. But an easier way to do this would be to say four, and then you just give it, you know, uh, you, like it needs a variable name here, which you can name this whatever you want. I just name it i because a lot of people name it i. And you say for i equals one. So this is where the number is gonna start, comma, 10. This is where the number will end, do. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna print out i and it's gonna keep on adding one to the i until it hits the final, you know, the final destination, and then it's gonna stop the loop. So if I print out i right now, and then I, I'll just run, I'll just run the game. Yeah, as you can see, it loops through, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, and then once i reaches ten, it stops looping. Now, what you actually could do is you could also add another number here, which will specify how many times i will be increased by. So if I, if let's say right now it's being increased by one, right? So it's gonna be one and then two and then three and then four. If I wanted to increase it by two every time, then I would just put a two here. So now instead of being increased by one, it's increasing by two. So if I run the game, it's gonna be one, three, five, seven, nine. Yeah, and then, and then it's gonna stop. So that's the idea behind a for loop. There is another type of for loop, which is where you loop through a table. So let me show you. If I make a local um, table, Var. I can't name a table because table is already like a word in Roblox Studio. Local table var is equal to, you know, these curly brackets. And a table is something that holds multiple values, right? So I can say one, two, three, comma, hello, comma, false. If I do four, I again, comma, V. And I'll explain what V means in table var. Then, or no, wait, no, is it do? It's do, yeah. Four, I, V in table var, do. And so what it's going to do is it's going to loop through all of the items in this table, right? So V is going to be equal to the actual item and I is going to be equal to the index, right? So in this case, I will be equal to the number of the um, the item or like it's it's like index, right? So, so one, two, three, the number is one. Hello, the number is two. False, the number is three, right? So if I print out I and then I print out V as well, and then we run. Yeah, so one is one, two, three, two is hello, three is false. There we go. So as you can see, I, it, like for, for regular tables, I is like the amount of times that you've already looped, right? So yeah, so hello is the second item and then false is the third item. And V is the actual like value inside of the table. So that, that's, that's the idea behind for loops. Now, the very last thing that I want to show you is a dictionary. And a dictionary is effectively a table where you change the index. So right now the index in this table, like the index is I, it's one, right? So the index of one, two, three is one. The index of hello is two. And the index of false is three. And the, the whole idea of an index is it's, serve, it's, it's there for you to find a certain value. So if I wanted to get the second 
value of this table, I would do, you know, print, I would do table var, and then I would do square brackets two. And so this will look for the index of two, and then it's gonna give me the value that's attached with the second index of the table, which is this, right? So if I, if I, if I run the game right now, yeah, there we go, it's gonna print out hello, because hello has the index of two. But then how would I go about changing the index? What if I, I don't want the index of hello to be two? What if I want it to be like something else, right? What if I want it to be a string, right? Let me show you. If we print out the, the table, so ju just the table by itself, here's how it looks like. So we didn't actually give it the index. This table just has values. If you don't change the index, Roblox will automatically make it for you. So as you can see, it looks like this. So it has the square brackets one is equal to one, two, three, comma, and then the, the index two is equal to hello, comma, the index of three is equal to false. If I were to copy the way Roblox does this, so if I copy this right now, and then instead of what we have here, I do this, right? So table var, and then, yeah, so this, this is basically what people consider a dictionary. A dictionary is where you change the index, right? So by default, the index will always be numbered, okay? So if you don't if you don't change the index, Roblox will automatically set the first ones to be one, second one to be two, third one to be three, and so on and so on. But what I could do is instead of this being one, I could I can make this one be one. <laughs> I could I could make it a string. Two. Ten thousand. <laughs> there we go, right? So I I can change the index. And now if I print out the table. There we go. So the index of one is equal to one, two, three. Index of 10,000 is equal to false. And the index of two is equal to hello. And if I wanted to get, you know, a, a certain value, now in, I cannot do something like this anymore because there's no index of two. If I try to get the index of two, it's going to say no, because it's going to be nil because there's no index in this table that's equal to two. But there's one equal to like the the word to right so this will work yeah there we go so this this will print out print out hello because the index of two as a word exists so now if i were to loop through this table so for iv in table var do and then i print out the i and then the v you will see that the i is equal to the index and v is equal to this value okay so let me show you so if I print out this stuff, yeah, so one is one, two, three, 10,000 is equal to false, and two is equal to hello. So that's the idea behind, you know, tables and loops, okay? I is the index, V is the value. And yeah, so I believe that is it for this episode. And in the next episode, I'm going to be covering the differences between the various scripts. So like, like, you know, we have a regular script, but then we also have a local script and we have a module script, right? So what are the differences between the two? So when you're done with this, you know, episode, once you're done learning everything, then, you know, move on to the next episode where I'm going to teach you about, again, the differences between scripts.